The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday, as you had it in the introduction at the beginning of the Mass, here at Notre Dame is celebrated as uh, Holy Cross Mission Week. And by Holy Cross Mission Week, the congregation of Holy Cross shares a little bit about the work that it's doing around the world and invites people to participate in this work and also to support us so that we can continue ministering to God's people around the world. So this is what we're doing today, and I would like just to begin on a lighter note. There is an African priest, a Ugandan priest that I know, who was doing a mission appeal like what I'm doing today, here in the U.S. And because we speak with an accent, he was a little bit worried that maybe the people didn't understand what he talked about. So after a week, he called the pastor of this parish and he asked him, did your parishioners understand my message? And this pa pastor, a very good man like Father Peter Roca, who is here, said, well, 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 well. <laughs> Probably they understood only half of what you said. But then he went ahead and added on, but they gave you the money all the same. <laughs> I hope today you'll not only be generous to the Holy Cross missions around the world, but you'll also understand my message. Because what brings me here is not just the money, but really to remind each one of you who is gathered here this morning that you're Catholic. You belong to a family that is universal that you have brothers and sisters in every corner of the world. Some of them you will find, you'll meet in life, others probably you'll never meet at all in life, but they are your brothers and sisters because we all belong to the same body of Christ. My name, as you heard, is Father Fred Jenga. Does anyone know the game Jenga? Jenga is a Swahili word and it means to build something or to develop something. And I see a lot of Jenga going on on the Notre Dame campus here. A lot of development going on. You know, we Africans have different naming systems. So we don't necessarily carry our parents' names. And you've heard I come from Uganda. And every time I try to introduce myself here in the US that, you know, I come from Uganda, of late people start asking me, did you say I come from Wakanda? <laughs> I said, no, I come from Uganda. But he just said Wakanda. Now he said, it's Uganda. <laughs> Unlike the mythical Republic of Wakanda, we haven't yet discovered any vibranium, so. 
Uganda is one of those uh, tiny African countries that is economically poor, largely because of bad politics over the years, but it's green, plenty of sun, noted for its so hospitality, and a lot of people have been there, including your rector here, uh, Father Peter Roker. Uganda is 44% Catholic. The seminaries are full there, the convents are full in Uganda, and the churches are also full. That is where we are. And Christianity has been there like 138 years so far. And every summer Notre Dame sends close to 20 students to go and work different projects in the country. And over the years I've met a lot of domers. And so by extension, I've become a very proud subway alum, alum of this uh, institution here. <laughs> So alongside all the good things that Holy Cross is doing in North America and in Europe, Holy Cross is doing excellent ministry in Latin America, in Africa, and in Asia. Ministry that helps to build people's faith, ministry that helps to relieve pain and suffering, ministry that helps people to rediscover their God-given dignity and understand that God cares about them and deeply loves them. So this work is going on. Our readings today beautifully highlight the impulses that drive the work that the Holy Cross is doing in those kinds of mission lands. The readings tell us about these two widows that didn't have much, but they had this indomitable faith in God. And out of that faith and the spirit of charity, they went ahead and shared the little that they had with others. And we have never stopped reading that, the stories of these two widows. The two widows embody uh, love and embody faith in God and love of neighbor. So they teach us a lot. And the work of Holy Cross around the world is just the same story of these two widows. Very limited resources but a lot of faith in God and a lot of love for, the, for their neighbors. That, is, that has always been uh, the impulse that drives the work of Holy Cross everywhere. And if you look into the history of this great university here of Notre Dame, you will just understand what I'm talking about. The very first party that arrived here, Father Sorin and the brothers, didn't really have much, a lot, a lot of resources, but they had a lot of faith in God and love of neighbor, and they went ahead and did whatever they did. 85% of the work of Holy Cross around the world is in low-income areas. That's why we're here to ask for your help so that we can continue doing that kind of work. For example, in Nairobi, Kenya, we run one of the largest parishes there. We have 30,000 parishioners in the parish that we run, and 20,000 of them show up every Sunday for Mass. But this area is located in Nairobi's poorest areas. And a lot of the parishioners rely on us for support. And the area also houses the city's open garbage dumping site. And that has come with a lot of health care needs for the people who live in this area. So Holy Cross runs a a low-cost dispenser in the area so that uh, uh, people can get some bit of health care. We need your support so that we can continue offering this healing ministry in that area. There are also young children in that area who live off the garbage dumping site, collecting plastic and collecting scrap metal for recycling. And what we do, we reach out to them as well, provide some bit of food, and also try to help with the rehabilitation process. Try to get them off sniffing glue and sniffing petrol and give them a different start in life. In Lima, Peru, we run again one of the largest parishes perhaps in the whole world. We have 200,000 parishioners, 200,000 parishioners in Canto Grande. It's a low cost. Uh, a low income area as well. And the life of the area revolves around this, area, uh, this parish. There are so many other ministries that are similar to this that can benefit from your support, 
that uh, Holy Cross, so that Holy Cross can continue offering those kinds of ministries. Today, as we continue reflecting on the two widows and Jesus who offered himself for the benefit of each one of us, we pray that the Lord renews our faith, that he also heightens our awareness of the many blessings we have in our lives and in our families. And we ask that he opens our hearts to find ways through which we can be able to share some of the blessings we have.